constituency relations is really about a dialogue between an elected official, a member of parliament, and the citizens that they represent. And by dialogue, what I mean is it's a two-way form of communication. Many members of parliament, I think, forget that. They end up talking more to their citizens that they represent and not necessarily listening to what they have to say. By creating this dialogue on a regular basis between the member of parliament and the citizens, it fosters a greater respect for the rule of law and the enforcement of the laws. Because when citizens feel they've had input into the development of legislation and the implementation of laws and policies, they are more likely to abide by those laws and policies. And it also ensures that the laws that are created reflect the interests and the concerns and the opinions of the citizens. So why is constituency relations important? Well, first of all, there are two other functions of a parliamentarian. Making the laws, passing the laws, and oversight. With regard to lawmaking, it's really a delicate art. You have to take so many interests of so many groups have to be considered before a law is passed to make sure that they feel comfortable with the law, but also that the law is addressing any concerns, legitimate, legal, policy concerns that these interested groups might have. By consulting with the citizens, by creating that dialogue with citizens on a regular basis, a member of parliament, a parliamentarian, is able to ensure that when the law is passed, it actually reflects many of the concerns. Also with regard to oversight, once a law or a policy has been adopted by the government, there is still a role for the parliament to actually review how the government is implementing that law or policy. And who better to seek input from than those who are impacted by that law or policy? By going out and, again, creating a dialogue, discussing the implementation of a law or a policy with the citizens who are affected by it, Parliamentarians are better able to know what is working and what isn't, what concerns there might be, what adjustments need to be made, either through amendments to that legislation or through recommendations to government through a parliamentary committee. So, when we talk about constituency relations, what do we mean? Well, there are some key elements. Let me first start by clarifying. I, I think there are two forms of constituency relations. One is geographic constituencies. Obviously this is easier in a parliament where the uh, member of parliament represents a geographic constituency instead of coming from a party list or a pure proportional representation system. In that situation, the member of parliament is actually rec recognized as representing all the citizens who live within certain boundaries. But there's also constituency relations that can apply to both types of parliaments, constituency and proportional representation. And it relates to constituencies based on interests. So meeting with the farmers union, meeting with civil society organizations that are working to address violence against women. These are not necessarily uh, constituencies that are based on geography. They could span the whole nation, but they do still represent a constituency and their concerns are just as legitimate. But when we talk about constituency relations, there are some key elements. One is obviously communication. You can't have a dialogue between an MP and citizens unless there's actually communication. So this can be by telephone, by email. Uh, what I think is very important, face-to-face. -face. Obviously, uh, technology is changing, but still that personal contact can be so important with regard to a citizen and an MP. There's the identification of the issues that the constituents have. This is usually done by seeking their opinions. And of course there are different ways you can do that. That can be done by going out and physically meeting with the constituents. It can be done by uh, surveys, public surveys. It can be done through web-based consultations. It can be done through parliamentary public hearings. There are different manners in which someone can actually identify what the concerns of constituents are. The third key element is advocacy. Once 
a member of parliament hears from citizens or hears from civil society organizations or community-based organizations or just plain groups in their constituency. It's important that they actually advocate on behalf of them. Listening is a very important part of the job of being a member of parliament, but it's not the end. Most citizens will expect some action, some attempt to try and address that concern. And of course this can be done in parliament. It can be done through the work of committees, it can be done through amendments to legislation. Finally, the fourth key element is meeting the needs of the citizens. So you can advocate, you can communicate, you can seek out their opinions, but in the end, a truly effective member of parliament, and one who is likely to get re-elected, is one who can actually identify those concerns, do something about them, take action, and actually address them.